Okay, here we are um, on our virtual machine for the networking lab, and I'm going to take you through making and troubleshooting the, the bash script that you need uh, to get through the first part of the lab. Now, um, in the lab script, it starts off not getting you to make a bash script at all, but uh, starting out on the Wellington node, just typing some commands. So I'm running this on a system where I've already found and fixed the first bug on the Taupo router, which you can find in a different video. Um, so when I ping uh, Taupo router from Wellington, as I'm going to do right now, what you'll see is I get a ping response. So that first line that we've got there is not a bash script. It's just a command line command that um, sends a ping packet out to a particular IP address and waits for a turn. The dash W1 means wait for one second before timing out, and the dash C1 means only send one packet only try one time. Uh, a C2 would send two packets and a W2 would wait for two seconds before timing out. The W1 that we put in there uh, prevents us from waiting for 10, 20 or longer seconds before um, realizing a timeout has occurred. So as we move through the lab script we start adding more and more to this and the next thing we do is we grep it and as a reminder grep is just a tool for filtering that output. So um, if we type in grep received uh, and then hit enter, what you'll see is instead of displaying all of those lines that we've got, uh, it will just display the one with the word received on it. And what I've done there is I have made the standard error that most people do. Nothing complicated, I have spelt the word received wrong. My I and E are around the wrong way. So if I go back and fix that, I will see this now actually outputs something. The next step is we're going to take that filtered output and we're going to filter it one more time using this command line tool called AWK. So I use my pipe character one more time and I type in AWK, oops, lowercase AWK, and then curly brackets and then apostrophe print space dollar sign four apostrophe. Once again, I hit enter. And what you've noticed there is something a bit strange. The uh, the what used to be an uh, a hash symbol allowing me to enter something has changed to this arrow. That means I've done something wrong. Specifically in this case, I have uh, I have entered in the wrong character in the AWK. If you find yourself in this situation where you can add more commands and it just won't like them and it won't do anything else, push Control C. That will get you out of it. And once again, I can push up on the d-pad to recall my last command. I'm going to hit backspace and delete all of that and I'm going to go and fix this by putting an apostrophe in. I'm going to hit enter again. I'm getting this strange command not found error. What is that all about? This is again another common mistake. Um, AWK is a command like ping or like grep. That means it must have a space after it before we pass its arguments. And in this case, the arguments are the things within the curly brackets. So all I'm missing is a space on the previous line. I hit space, I hit enter, and now we can see the appropriate cleaned output of that command. What AWK does is it takes the output um, of the previous command in this case, and it slices it up based on the space. So AWK is um, slicing up the line that you can see slightly further up this page, which is one packet transmitted, one received, 0% packet loss, time 0 milliseconds. Um, it's slicing that up and it's returning the fourth value in that list of sliced up arguments, which is the number one. It's actually the number one that's next to the word received. And the reason we're using that is that if it's a one, it means a ping has been successful. If it's a zero, it means a ping has failed. And at this point here, this is where we start getting into more bash script territory. But before we do, we're adding one more thing to our command. And this time it's at the beginning, not the end. So we're typing ssh root at 192.168.56.2 space. Um, then we have to wrap up our ping command in quotation marks. So I'm just going to do that and they must be closed. What are we doing now? Well we're saying okay instead of running that command on the Wellington computer I'm going to SSH into another computer and I'm going to do the same thing. In this case, the computer that we are uh, logging into, SSHing into, is at 192.168.56.2, which, curiously enough, in this case, 
does actually happen to be the Wellington computer. So one of the things you can do with SSH is that you look and log into the machine that you are already on with it. That is useful for a variety of reasons that I'm not going to go into here, but it is not a mistake in the bash script. If I hit enter, what you'll see is it will ask me for a password. That's good. That's what SSH is supposed to do. And the password is root. I hit enter. It runs that command, the same command that we had before. So the ping dash um, w1 dash c1 10.0.3.2. Um, it runs that command on the other computer and it passes the output as it did before and ultimately ends with the number one. So the ping command itself is the only thing being run on that other computer. As we can see, if I delete all of this and type in root one more time, we can see the whole ping output as it's been run. Moving on. The next step is it's really irritating to type in that password every single time. So we're going to add in a really useful tool. We are going to add in non-password authentication by typing dash I after SSH and typing in key file dot private all uppercase. What that does is instead of authenticating with a password, um, we have installed a public private key pair on the Wellington machine and every other machine on this network. That means they are authenticated, they are allowed to um, log into each other without passwords in this case. Um, again, a very useful tool. You don't need to understand the details of this, but if we hit enter now, we get a one back and I haven't had to input the password. The last step before we turn this into a bash script is um, to take that output and save it as a variable rather than just having it displayed on the screen. And I do that by making a variable name, in this case output, and then putting an equal sign after it. No spaces. In bash, no spaces are around variable assignments. If I do this and run it, you'll get an error. And that's because rather than assigning a variable, what I've got up above is I'm assigning a variable to a series of different commands, which doesn't make sense. What I need around them are backticks. And that's because backticks in Bash are to be interpreted as an executable command. And then the output of that command is saved as a variable. So if I go back up and I add a backtick to the end and the beginning of our original uh, our original command line command so before SSH and after the end of that AWK and hit enter all of a sudden I don't get an error but nothing is printed out and that's just because I'm assigning a variable of value of course nothing is printed out I haven't told it to to print out on the command line I type echo dollar sign and then the variable name which in this case is output um, if I spell the word output correctly that command will actually work there we go. So now my one is being saved. And now I'm going to take all of this and put it into a bash script. So I don't have to type it at the command line each and every time and editing it becomes easier. Now I suggest when you do this, uh, you just open up a new file. Um, I'm going to use the text editor nano. You can use VI if you prefer. And we're going to give it the file name network underscore connectivity. Enter. Now I'm in here. Our bash scripts always start with slash bin slash bash and then we type in exactly what we had before output equals backtick ssh dash i key file dot private root at 192.168.56.2 ping dash w1 dash c1 10.0.3.2 pipe to grep r e c e i v e d which i spoke correctly this time a w k space print dollar four close my brackets oops finish my apostrophes and then close that back tick enter echo dollar sign output and I'm willing to bet I've made at least one typo in there that I haven't noticed because I've been recording so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that bash script and see what happens to do that 
I have to change the permissions on it. So I'm going to go chmod plus x, which means add executable permissions to my file, which is called network connectivity. There I go. It's ready to be executed. And now I execute it with dot slash network connectivity, dot slash the file name. In that case, it appears that I have typed everything correctly, and my bash script is outputting one, the same as what it did before. Now, the next step is to go back into and edit that uh, bash script one last time. I hit enter, and what we're going to do is we're going to add into a for loop. And the for loop for j in 1.11 space don't forget the space between the curly brackets up here otherwise you'll get a very very strange thing up the uh, thing happening with your IP addresses do and done which is my start and end of my for loop in bash and then there are a few other edits that I need to make the first one is I'm going to delete this three here and I'm going to replace it with a dollar J what does that mean? Well, now, as I go through this for loop, I'm going to log on to the Wellington computer, and I'm going to ping a different network using Wellington each time the script is run. Um, each time it's going to output either a 1 or a 0 or a blank space if something else goes wrong. But just having that output is a bit dull. However, just to show you that it works, I'm going to run it again, and we will see a 1, a 0, a 1, a 1, and a 0. That's not super helpful because it tells us some pings are working, others are not, but it doesn't tell us which one is which. So if I go back into the script one more time, let's edit the second line now in accordance with what is in the file. Again, I've got some bash ticks, and I'm going to type host 192.168.56.2 uh, space awk apostrophes print dollar if I remember, remember that correctly, close my backtick, dot, 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 output. What does that do? Well, so what the second line does is it runs the host command and it looks up what machine am I pinging from. From there, it, uh, it um, strips that output and it takes the fifth element of that which it turns out is the name of the machine we're pinging from and uh, oops I have uh, forgotten to add in a particular point in here to 10.0.$j.2 what this will say is the first part will look up what is the name of the machine that I'm on at the moment the second part will say which uh, machine is it trying to ping if I hit exit yes and then run that we'll see Wellington the machine try and connect to all these different networks and what I can see is that about half of them work and about half of them fail the last part of this bash script and the bit that you need to do yourself is to extend that one step further and add another for loop so that we ping machines, uh, we ping from machines that aren't just Wellington. It's very simple, um, but just as a reminder, for this lab, you only need to go through the hosts, you don't need to ping from gateways, and you don't need to ping from routers. So good luck with that. Hopefully this has helped you debug your bash script and get something up and running and make you ready for the second part of the lab.